All right, so we are back here at uh, AME in Jacksonville, Florida, and we just got done doing an interview with Drew uh, on uh, uh, lean culture. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of switch gears and maybe get a little bit more focused on on, on a particular topic. And the topic is uh, is value stream mapping. And as we talked about in the in the first video, in case you haven't seen it, uh, Drew uh, co-authored a book, and uh, this is one of the first books that I ever leveraged for value stream mapping in my own personal journey. So. Uh, it's a, it's a great book um, called The Complete Lean Enterprise, and what was uh, I was especially drawn to was it was for administrative and office processes, where already to see and some of the other earlier works were, you know, I guess, I don't know, more manufacturing focused, you know, making mirrors in a plant or something like that, <laughs> I don't know. So, first of all, let's just kind of, let's just kind of high level, uh, w w tell us about the book. A little bit, um, in in particular, maybe how it's different than say learning to see, and uh, um, why did you write it? I guess basically to for the reasons you just mentioned, uh, people were taking learning to see and trying to apply it to more complex uh, situations, even in manufacturing. Like yeah. I, I worked a lot in the in the nineties and into the two thousands with job shops, yeah. you know, high mix, low volume kind of places, and taking that book, learning to see and trying to apply ACME stamping, it, it just Acme was very problem, <laughs> yeah. problematic. Yeah. And unfortunately, people are very literal. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so they look at the case study and they try to replicate it for yeah. them and they would struggle and rightfully so. Yeah. The, the case study was so overly simplified, it, it, it actually undermined its credibility in a lot of ways with, mm. with other organizations. So that was one of the reasons that we developed uh, or wrote the book, The Complete Lean Enterprise. And actually, the case study is a manufacturing case study, but we focus on the information flow. Right. And it is a job shop. Yeah. Uh, and in the case study, we try to make it more realistic. Yeah. Uh, instead of, you know, one process box representing the entire information flow, right. I think we have like nine, <coughs> you know. Yeah. To, to make it more realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, so if people are going to, and everyone wants examples, you know. If they're going to try to replicate, at least they would have something more realistic. Yeah. Um, we also uh, saw that the future state questions, which is really the power of value stream mapping, and mm. it's one of my uh, pet peeves that not, not everyone uses it when they redesign um, to a future state or for a future state. Mm -hmm. The future state questions that we're in learning to see were difficult to translate to other um, contexts, mm. including office and services. So we took those questions and reworded them, changed their sequence a little bit, uh, so they were more friendly uh, to and more understandable for people mm -hmm. for in office and service environments. Okay, so what are some, uh, let's just, as we're focused on office and service environments now, as it pertains to value stream mapping, what are some of the pitfalls that you see folks uh, falling into? Well, probably the, one of the most common ones is there's no data available, and they kind of just throw their hands up and uh, well, that data has to be collected because it's, you know, manufacturing is always an abundance of data, not always the right data, but um, you in the office the there, there yeah, isn't. There, you know, so. Uh, so, and it's less tangible, the work mm -hmm. is less tangible and so yeah. these are some of the challenges. But that being said, you can't just throw your hands up and say, well, that's the nature of the office. It, it just means you have to have a little more uh, keener skills for mm -hmm. value stream mapping mm -hmm. to do a proper map. Yeah. Uh, a lot of organizations, they send me maps to look at, and they're not really proper. They don't have the right data on there. Well, we don't have that data. It's like, you can collect it, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe as a precursor to the event, you might have people collect information quality type information, what we call complete and accurate in the book. Uh, have them collect it for a few weeks. So when you actually do the map, it's available. Mm -hmm. uh, another pitfall is they tend to spend too much time in a conference room mm -hmm doing the map. Mm. Uh, and part of this is to make work visual uh, and visible. Well, you have to see the work to yeah. be able to do that and map so it properly. So go to Gimba, even uh, Absolutely. office Gimba. So, which can be difficult. You know, how many people can you get in my cubicle? How many mm -hmm. people can you squeeze into my, my office? Mm -hmm. So we typically keep the team small, six to eight. You can, you can get eight around uh, in a cubicle. Uh, to actually see the person per demonstrating the work, I actually even conducting the work in mm -hmm. front of the group. Short of that, uh, because sometimes in, in the office and services, the work isn't just in one location. It yeah. could be around the world. 
So we'll do virtual tours. Mm. Uh, we might you know, get on a computer in a conference room or a meeting room, and the person has access to the, the computer-based tools, and they're, but we're projecting it up. So they're actually doing the work in the conference room so everyone can see, mm. everyone can learn together. Because yeah. you can describe to me in words what you do, and I could have a completely different interpretation yeah. than Greg over here. You know? Right. We need to learn and understand it together. And the only way I know to do that is through direct observation. Yeah. Yeah. You ever use any, like, I don't know, like, go to a webinar or something like that and, like, watch well, people's oh, screens? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've had maps where work was done in China. And we, yeah. Sometimes we've flown them in. Other times they're on uh, Skype yeah. going through what they're doing yeah. with a, using a camera. And we can all have a better chance of understanding what they're describing yeah. to us. Yeah. Because if we don't understand it, when we go to redesign it, we could really mess it uh, up. Mess it up. <laughs> and I've seen that happen. I always ask people, how often does that happen? Yeah. Where a change was made because people didn't quite understand it right. oh, all the time around here. Right, right, right. So we want to avoid that when we when we do the mapping event. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about uh, percent uh, CNA. You know, we, we actually you know, we talk about it in our value stream mapping course and credit you guys because I think you were the first one I mean first that I was ever aware of uh, to use that term mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about the importance of that metric well it's complete and accurate right so it, I could have incomplete information or I could have information it's inaccurate so we kind of combine those two mm -hmm. just to kind of keep it simple uh, it is, pro it is a measure of defect or correction waste. Mm -hmm. And in office and services, that's probably the biggest waste. Sure. And it's usually the focus of the first future state or future states. Yeah. Uh, because you can never flow if yeah. the information or service quality is not there. Uh, what we learned, and we experimented with this uh, many years ago, if, how do you get that information? So if I ask you, you're, you're, <laughs> you're producing, you're doing some sort of work, you're, you're doing a process. If I ask you, what is the quality of your output? It's, it's incredible. It's, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we don't ask that question. Yeah. You ask the recipient. Yeah. You know, you ask the recipient and you'll get a better answer. Yeah. And then you'll ask the recipient for some examples and, yeah. you know, what are the top three kind of problems that you have? And uh, so... It, it That's really a bit of a swag, though, that, probably right? still in many cases, right? It, if I mean, we've not collected it yeah. prior to the event. And most people, like, we'll lay it out. You know, if there's 10 orders, let's lay them out. Let's look at them right there. Yeah. So it's a little more than a swag. But, yeah. uh, but sometimes it is. Yeah. And we can, I always tell people, whatever number goes on the value stream app, if you want to tighten it up later with it's some dynamic, real data right? collecting, yeah. you can do that. Sure. I can think of maybe two or three times in 14, no, 17 years of mapping. Uh, value stream mapping. We used to call them level zero maps years ago. Uh, level zero. I've never yeah, heard of that. high level. Okay. High level maps. That's okay. what Bo and I used to call them. Okay. So, you know, if they, I think maybe I can count three times where yeah. some some post mapping uh, data collecting yeah. made us rethink the future state sure. in, in any substantial way. Sure. Sure. Okay. So. You've, you've already talked about you know some of the differences, but are there are there more differences that you can think of between uh, between an office you know value stream map and a say a traditional manufacturing map? Uh, one of the big differences too is there's some natural variation in, in more so in office and services. Mm -hmm. So what we recommend is to actually depict the information in a, in a form of a range mm -hmm. you know, the data. So if I ask you what your process time is to do whatever in order. You know, and you say, well, it varies. The you phone know, rings, then it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so we say, okay, you know, what would be the variation, you know, without the phone ringing? Mm -hmm. you know, just, <laughs> just flat out, here's yeah. two orders. Oh, that could be five minutes, that could be 10. Okay. You know, I might challenge that and say, when was the last time it was 10? Oh, just today. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. Someone starts saying, well, it could be five minutes to 50 minutes. When was the last time it was 50 minutes? Oh, three years ago, it was 50. All right, in the last week or two. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and depict the information as a range because it's important learning to understand there's some variation here and maybe we have to do something about it. Yeah. Maybe it's actionable. Maybe it's not. Mm. You know, maybe we just have to design a robust yeah. future state that can handle that. Yeah. Yeah. So something that we also talked about before the uh, the interview, we were talking about that with many lean tools and, and, and even in our previous interview that we talked about, there's a, there's a big social aspect to, to lean and lean thinking and continuous improvement. Um, but what about value stream mapping? Do you see the same kind of, um, I don't know, scenario, Absolutely. situation? These are social tools. 
And value stream mapping is a tremendously social tool. Because think about it, it's gonna, the map is typically going to take you across multiple departments and functions yeah. that usually don't play well together. Yeah. You know, it's going to cut through those silos. Mm -hmm. uh, so this will bring people together in just learning from each other in the current state. Yeah. And it's certainly, it's going to be a shared vision of the future state across these departments. Mm. So there's a huge social aspect to this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of organizations overlook that. Yeah. Uh, even beyond the event itself and the map is complete, I ask, what do you do with them? Yeah. And a lot of times, oh, we put it in, you know, on the computer or something, one of the, the uh, software, software tools that are yeah. available. And I say, well, that's a shame. You know, why would you not post it up in the various areas that are affected by this mm -hmm. change? Because this is we're talking about systemic radical change with value stream mapping. We're not talking about incremental improvement. Right. You know? uh, so we need to communicate that and let people know what we're doing, why we're doing it, where, what's yeah. the progress, you know, mm -hmm. where are we at. And what a great way to do it is post the map, make notes on it, yeah. that this has changed, these are the new d data or metrics. Uh, so I think people lose a lot by not adequately sharing them and, and making them part of the fabric of our visual management. Have you ever done it to where you, you, you kind of, uh, your, your future state map, you know, you had the ideal state, future state map up here, over here, but then you had a, a, a separate version, which was the, uh, so you had the current state here, uh, ideal future state over here, then in the middle as a, a working future state, like, in other words, to kind of oh, see the progress. Have always. You ever seen that? Yeah. I do that more so than ever, yeah. uh, doing an I ideal state. Yeah. I want something that's practical that we know we can do. <laughs> yeah, no, but what I'm saying, where so, it is now. So if I walk in, I, I walk into the room and I can see, oh, there's the current state. Here's where they want to go eventually in six mm -hmm. months. And oh, here's where they are now. We just mark up the current state. Oh, okay. And, and you cross things out, yeah. you update it, and then ultimately it starts to become yeah. the future state. Yeah. So we just say mark up the current state. Okay. So, because it is the new current. Sure. So, and I'm, we're not naive to believe all the changes we make are going to work. Yeah. So we want to update the metrics on the map, update the map itself, yeah. and verify, yeah, this is moving us in the right direction. If not, maybe we need to reconsider yeah. you know, the future state that we envision. So the last question I have for you is, is, this is the, I've given you all these softballs to knock out of the park, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm going to give you a fastball here. So there, there's, a, you know, in, I'm sure you've, you've seen it, maybe <laughs> there's within the, even the lean community, some, some, you know, maybe, I don't know, folks that pretty easy, I don't know, think they're pretty knowledgeable mm -hmm. on a topic. <laughs> I'm trying okay. to be politically correct here. You know, I'm on podcast and uh, nope. <laughs> video. Don't bother. And, and, and they're, very, they're, they're, they're pretty critical of value stream mapping. And some people will, will downright say, uh, you, know, uh, you know, it's misused, it's abused, it's uh, um, some people, their, their, own, their, their whole life revolves around their value stream maps and nothing else really matters. Um, have you, what, what's your, your sense on that? I mean, uh, uh, how critical is value stream mapping to a, a developing a true lean culture and, and, and really invoking change? Do you think you can do it without it? Do you, do you have to have value stream mapping as part of your kind of portfolio of tools? What, what's your thoughts on that? Well, being an author of not just one book, but two books on yeah. value stream mapping, I, I find it as a very powerful tool. Yeah. Do you have to have it? Um, probably not, but uh, how else, it's a, you know, how are you going to convey this vision of where we're going? Yeah. In in real terms. Yeah. You know, uh, if you have another way of doing that, then so be it. Yeah. But if you don't, this is a way of doing it. You know, with the future state. Um, how else are you going to grasp the current condition? Yeah. And. Remember, you know, value stream, it is misused and abused. Most, I would say 50% of the maps that people ask me to look for are not properly done. Current and future state. It's discouraging. Mm. <laughs> uh, so I can agree uh, with some of the sentiment. But it just tells me we need to better teach it. Yeah, it doesn't it. mean you throw the baby out of the bathwater, exactly. right? Yeah. You know, so how, like, you know, these value streams cut across functions and departments, as I said earlier. So how are you going to get that clear to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, if you have another means of doing that, yeah. then, then so be it, in a visual, understandable way. Uh, now, can it be misused? Any tool, it's a tool. Sure. And any tool can be misused. Yeah. 
So I've had people mapping departments. You can't map departments. You map flows of service, information, material. Mm -hmm. I've had people map things of just tremendous, tremendously limited, like printing a purchase order out. I, I, <laughs> don't do a value stream map for that, but I've seen yeah. these things. Yeah. Uh, I've seen people do a decent job of current state mapping, but there's no future state. Mm. So what, why, you know, what's yeah. the benefit of that? Yeah. Or they show me, when I ask, where's your future state, they show me a current state with 100 post-it notes up of all these ideas for improvement. And I usually s respond to those people, don't, uh, don't ever do that again. <laughs> That's not what the tool, how it should be used. Yeah. It's, you know, what are you going to do with 100? Oh, we're going to make a list and we're going to prioritize and put names and dates on it. I'm like, really don't do that again. Mm. You know, so that just tells me that we've not done an adequate job of educating people on yeah. this powerful tool. So they know when to use it, when not to use it. Uh, and it, when they do use it, they use it properly. Yeah. So again, I, I agree with, there's been a lot of abuse of the tool, Yeah. but it didn't, don't throw the baby yeah. out with the bathwater as you well, said. Hey, we launched our company on a, with a value stream mapping course, so I'm a believer as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and do again, thank you for, for writing such a great book there. Uh, it, uh, it, it helped me a lot long before Gimlet Academy was ever. With, with your product development background, you may be interested in the second book too. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Maybe we could do another uh, podcast okay. and we'll talk about that. <laughs> Perhaps. I've been doing a lot of work with that book, actually, the last yeah. two years. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ron. Take care.